Creative Maths, including Statistics Learning Centre, brings you Comparing Two Samples Using Box Plots. Hi, I'm Dr Nick. In this video, I'm going to talk about comparing two samples using box plots. This builds on the video Sampling Variation in Box Plots, which showed how different samples from the same population can vary from each other. In that video, we looked at samples of apples from a theoretical population of red apples in an orchard with a mean weight of 100 grams and a standard deviation of 20 grams. Now we will have samples taken from two different populations. We will look at two varieties of apple. We cannot test the entire population of all the apples from each variety, but we take a sample of each. We are interested to know if there is a difference in weight between the two types of apple. Note that the data in the following graphs is made up or simulated to show different effects that would happen in a real situation. Note also that we would only ever take one sample for each variety of apple and we would not know the values from the population. When we look at these two box plots comparing a sample of 50 red apples and 50 pink apples, we can see that there is very little difference in the medians. This is not surprising, as in this case, the two populations have the same distribution. Even the box widths for the samples are about the same. Here are another two box plots from identical populations. The box plots look a bit different from each other. The sample median for the pink apples is quite a bit higher than the sample median for the red apples, but it is still within the box that shows the middle 50% of the weights of the red apples. Here are a few more pairs of samples, all from populations with the same weights, for you to get an idea of what it looks like when there is no difference in the populations. For most of the pairs, there is considerable overlap for the middle 50% of values. Occasionally, we get a pair of samples like this that makes it look as if there might be a difference when there is no difference in the underlying populations. If we concluded that there was a difference when there isn't one, that is known as a type 1 error. As we would only have that one set of samples to draw conclusions from, we would not know that we had made an error. In our previous video, Sampling Variation and Box Plots, you can see many box plots of samples from the same population which shows how they can vary. Now we will change the pink apple population to one with a median of 140 grams. The pink apples in this population will tend to weigh 20 grams more than the red apples. We will look at several pairs of box plots to see what happens when there is a difference between the populations. We would expect a difference as large as this to show up most of the time. In just about all of the sample sets, it is clear that the median for the pink apples is considerably higher than for the red apples. The median for one or both of the samples is outside the box of the other sample. But in this set, there is still overlap for the two boxes. If we looked at these without knowing the underlying populations, we would not really have evidence that the median of the pink apples was higher than the red apples. That is how it is with statistical inference. We can only draw conclusions from the data we have, and sometimes variation gives us inconclusive results, or even wrong results at times. If we said that there was no difference between the weights of the apples back in the population, in this instance we would make a type 2 error. Guidelines for making the call it is helpful to have some guidelines in making the call as to whether we have evidence of a difference in the population or not. For this pair of box plots, the boxes do not overlap at all. This is pretty strong evidence that the median weight of the pink apples is greater than that of the red apples back in the population. In this pair of box plots, the boxes do overlap, but one of the medians lies outside the box of the other sample. And in this pair of box plots, the boxes do overlap, but both the medians lie outside the box of the other sample. In these instances, we do have evidence that there is likely to be a difference in the weights back in the populations. In this pair of box plots, each median lies within the box of the other sample. We cannot conclude that there is a difference back in the population. 
for the sample, the median weight of the red apples is higher, but we cannot conclude that this is also the case in the population of red and pink apples. Practice examples. Let's do some practice exercises. For each of the pairs of box plots, decide if there is a clear difference, a likely difference, or no difference. What conclusion would you come to? Pause and have a think about it. The boxes do not overlap at all. It is clear evidence that the median weight of the pink apples is greater than that of the red apples back in the population. When we look at the underlying distribution, we can see that the difference back in the population is 30 grams. Here's another example. For these box plots, there is considerable overlap. Both the medians are inside the other box. There is no evidence of difference in the population. And another example. In this pair of box plots, the boxes do overlap, but one of the medians lies outside the box of the other sample. There is likely to be a difference between the medians back in the population. Here's a summary with examples. No overlap, clear difference in the population. Some overlap, but median or medians outside the other box, some evidence of difference in the population. Lots of overlap and medians inside the other box, no evidence of difference in the population. This is an informal way to look at how samples may or may not indicate differences in the populations from which the samples are drawn. For a more formal test, we would use confidence intervals or a hypothesis test for the difference of two means. It is important to get a good understanding of what is happening from the graphs also. In the description below are links to further videos around the statistical concepts covered in this video. Please like this video, subscribe, but most of all join the channel. Especially if you are using our videos in your teaching. Help the channel grow and help me help more and more people like you. Joining the channel also gives you access to more helpful videos like these. I am truly grateful for my channel members who help make these videos possible.